Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. This is part two of the Flight Radar 24 system I built up. I've, over the last few weeks, I've done a lot of little tests, experimenting between different lengths of cable, different types of cable, different types of SDR, uh, the software-defined radio to pick up uh, the flight transmissions from the aircraft. Um, and as I say, the results are in. I'll go through them briefly now, but it'll all be printed up um, in the comments and it also should appear at the end of this video on the screen so you can pause the video and have a little look. But basically, I did a test to start with between a 60 centimeter antenna and a 1.2 meter antenna. There is a difference. There was an increase between, uh, depending on what you're looking at, the flight scene, we're up by 6%. Uh, overall hits and positions reported, we're up by 13%. That was just a straight antenna, uh, antenna swap. Now, if we swapped out the 10 meter cable, this is running on a 60 centimeter antenna now. It's a different system lower in the garden. Everything is based around that now. Swap out the 10 meter cable to an active USB cable, which effectively does away with all this aerial cable where you're going to get a signal loss. And I've used something like this. So I've gone from a 10 meter to about a 15 centimeter aerial cable. And that feeds straight into the USB dongle. So any signal loss is mitigated. You've lost that, that's all gone. Because with the USB cable, the active USB cable, which plugs straight into here, all the signal you get into this SDR is not being lost in aerial cable at this end, so to speak. So, and there was quite a difference. The, you know, I, I, let me have a look. I'm looking over on my notes. Um, overall, probably between 5 and 10% increase across the board by using active USB instead of the um, signal losing coaxial cable there. Then there were other tests we did, uh, looking at the SDR blog straight on here compared to a FlightAware um, Pro Plus stick. Uh, again, there were differences uh, all listed in the notes. Then probably the ultimate test was the active USB cable with the uh, RTL SDR blog stick and their low noise amp, which simply screw together like this. <clears throat> then this will go off to the short antenna. Uh, signals fed back down the active USB. And I compared this system um, with the FlightAware Pro Plus stick, and between the two, the one that had much difference, to be honest. So this is 40, this is 40, give or take a few pennies. The FlightAware Pro Plus stick, 48. But it's a lot simpler to run the FlightAware stick, I must admit. And the, the, you'll see in the data, as I keep saying, there's not that great a difference between the two. This can be tweaked. Um, what I had to do, unfortunately, on here, I didn't have time to sort the software out. Within the um, RTL SDR blog software, um, you're able to go in and turn on what's called a bias T. The bias T outputs five volts up into the amplifier. The amplifier needs to be powered with five volts. And there's no plugs or sockets on it, apart from the signal going in and coming out. So you've got two choices. The choice I chose, for simplicity, is a hardware bias T. And this would connect up here with another joiner. Uh, basically, you put five volts in here. It won't feed back into the SDR. It's very important you get this the right way round. It won't feed back. In fact, oh, that's the wrong way round, so please don't fit it like that. We swap that round. Basically, what that'll do will feed five volts only out of this connector, which I need to feed the LNA. So that's fine. Um, but you do introduce two and a half dB signal loss with this board. So ideally, if you're going to use the LNA, use it with a BIOS T enabled within the software. As long as you've got the version 3, there is a version 2 and a version 1, which is hardware configured. But this is software configured uh, for the LNA. You don't need the LNA, but you get a lot better signal response when you're using the RTLSDR.com. But as I said, you can get rid of that. I, am, I can't show you the uh, FlightAware Pro Plus stick. It's actually being used up on the system at the minute. But look, I'll end the video there. That was just an update. The data is fairly conclusive. There's a couple of data blips in there. So 
it, you really I could have done with a better uh, a longer time to do the test rather than two days a week for each test would have ironed out any results we got but yeah on the whole the um, we got better and better by swapping out the aerial cable to an active cable um, the SDR blog with the LNA uh, for instance, or the flight aware with the active cable. Lots of different combinations, all printed out for you. So go and have a look at that. There is going to be a part three, good or bad, there will be a part three where I'm going to show you the final finished system, which is going to be on the main 1.2 meter antenna with probably about a 30 foot, an uh, 30 foot mast. Uh, so I'm going to raise the 1.2 meter antenna in the air. I'm going to use a 20 meter active USB cable here. And I'm going to try this, the SDR blog and the LNA, but more likely I'm going to end up with a flight aware on its own. But that's in a future video. There's a bit of hardware and a bit of lathe work to go on because I, I want to mount um, everything within the pole, not on the outside. So I want a, a no cable showing, just simply a pole in the air. So that should be quite interesting, but that, that's a few weeks away. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Go and have a look at the notes. Please feedback any comments you've got, uh, any questions. I'll try to answer them. Um, as I say, I hope you found this interesting. It's more sort of the results I got from the data than what we actually did um, in a practical sense, but hopefully uh, it's made sense. If not, drop me a line and I'll try to answer the questions for you. Anyhow, thanks for watching, hopefully, this short video.